Hey guys, my name is Scobie. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add a timecode to a video track in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is going to be a nice quick and easy tutorial on screen right now. You can see an example of this. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing I want to do is have a project open with a sequence and a video track on your timeline. As you can see right now, I have this nice video track just playing on screen right now. So the first thing I want to do is come to our effects control panel. If you can't locate to this, simply come up to window and click on effects. And from here, we're going to be using the search bar on the top and we're going to be searching for timecode. Now by doing this, we should find a timecode function that we're gonna be dragging and dropping onto our video track. And as you can see, by doing this, we instantly have a timecode on our video track. The next thing we're gonna be doing is playing out with some of the settings for the timecode because we can do some really cool things with this. To do this, we're gonna be coming up to our effects control panel. If you can't find your effects control panel, simply come up to window and go to effect controls. And if we open up our timecode effect, we can see we have a number of different options to play around with. So I'm gonna be going over some of the more vital ones. You can play around with some of the other ones in your own leisure, but just for speed and efficiency of this video, I'm gonna be going over the most important ones. So the first thing we can look at is the position and these refer to the X and Y coordinates of our time code on our track. So as you can tell if I move these around you can see our time code moves around and it's really really easy to move it exactly wherever you want it. The next thing we have is the size and if we increase this the size of our time code is going to increase on our video track. So you can play around with this accordingly, put it wherever you want and put it to the size you need it. Underneath this we have opacity and the opacity is going to refer to how dark or light the background box of our time code is going to be. So the higher the opacity, the darker the box is going to be, the lower the opacity, the lower the box is going to be, and you can completely remove it by putting the opacity to zero. This really depends on the color of your video and where you want to put it. So play around with this to your heart's content. Underneath this, we have the field symbol, which is going to be this small ellipse at the end of our time code. You can turn this on and off if you wish. Usually I leave this on because it's a good starting point, but this is really up to you. Underneath this, we have the format, and this is going to refer to the actual time code presence on our track. So the different formats will put it in different shapes, different numbers, and different arrangements. So if we open up our format function, we have SMPTE, which is going to set it to hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. If we set it to frames, it's going to be just the frames of the actual track to determine where you are. So the different frame rates of your video will determine different points. So the frame rate of your video is 50. It's going to set it to 50 frames and it'll count up 50 frames every second. If we go back to our format and go to feet and frames of 16 mil, this is really just for film reels. So for the most part, I don't think many people will ever be using this. So in this case, I'd recommend sticking to SMPTE or frames. Usually I would use SMPTE though. When we have SMPTE selected, we also have the option of setting time display. And the time display is gonna determine what frames we wanna count. So in this case, it's set to 50 because that's what my track is shot at. And I would recommend whatever you're shooting at to set it to that in here. But of course we can set it to 25 manually, but our time rate is gonna double and our time code is not going to be accurate as you can see we're actually at nine seconds on our track but now it's counting to 18 because our frame rate is set to half we're going to set it back to 50 just to leave it alone because that's the best way to do it underneath this we also have an offset which we can set to in frames to determine of an offset on the time code so as you can tell if we bring this to lower we can see that our time code on our screen is set to lower even though our track hasn't been touched and if we bring this higher it'll do the opposite effect usually i would recommend leaving this to zero unless you have a really specific case but it's an option that you have available to you so underneath this we have the last valuable piece I think which is the label text and here we can set up if you have a multicam setup if you're shooting from different angles we can select say for example camera one where it'll add a CM1 to the start of your time code just so you know this is the first camera and this is really good for multicam setups or if you're showing it to other people but the time code can really be helpful if you're asking for some critiquing advice so people can say exactly which frame and which second they would change and it's really really useful in that case anyway guys it's as simple as that to add time code and edit your time code in adobe premiere pro if you guys enjoyed this tutorial be sure to drop a like subscribe if you're new check out the other videos on the channel i'm going to leave a link down below to my paypal if you found this video helpful and you want to support me of course there's no pressure if you can't anyway guys thank you so much for watching until next time as always keep it saucy peace